Welcome everyone. Let's begin our lesson for today by going over the learning goals and success criteria. First, what are we learning? We're learning how to understand the various types of triangles by their angle and side measures and how to recognize congruence in geometric figures. How are we learning it? Through the parts of a triangle and congruence notes and the parts of a triangle and congruence assignment. When can we use this information? To recognize similarities and differences that will allow you to distinguish between solutions in your life. How do you know you learned it? By getting a score of four on the parts of a triangle and congruence assignment. Now let's take a look at our agenda for today. We will begin by going over the learning goals and success criteria. While we do that, you'll fill out your Get It Started. Once you've completed your Get It Started, we'll go over it together and answer any questions that you may have. Next, we'll do our weekly raffle. After that, we'll go over the parts of a triangle and congruence notes, and then I'll give you time to complete the parts of a triangle and congruence assignment on Desmos. Once you've completed the assignment, we'll go over it together and answer any questions that you may have. At the end of class, we'll go back over our learning goals and success criteria while you fill out your Before You Go. Your only homework for tonight is to continue working on the Triangle Congruences Study Guide and any incomplete assignments that you may have. Let's take a look now at the parts of triangles and congruence notes. The notes begin with the learning goals and success criteria. Now what is congruence? Congruent means that two geometric figures are exactly the same, meaning that the lengths and the angles are the same. The symbol for congruent is this equal sign with the squiggly on it. So we can see that we have three triangles here. And they're all exactly the same. Now, they're rotated a little bit. They're flipped around. They might look a little different, but the sizes are all the same. So they all have the same lengths. So this side and this side are the same and this side. This side down here and this side and this side are all the same. And all the angle measures are the same. This angle and this angle and this angle are all the same. This angle, this angle, and this angle are all the same, and so on. So triangles can be congruent even if they are not facing the same direction. So for instance, we have three triangles here. And we're given the sides and angle measures. And if they're all congruent, then we need to make sure that their corresponding sides and angles are congruent. So if this side is 1, that means this side here would also be 1 because that's the corresponding side. And then this bottom side here is 2. And the bottom now is this part here, so this side length is 2. And then the longest side, the hypotenuse here, is 3, which is this side here, so that side's 3. And then we look at the next one. So again, this side is 1, and that corresponding side in this triangle is this side here, so that side's 1. And then this bottom part here is now the top over here, so this is 2. And then this long side is 3, which is this side here, so that's 3. So notice that even when we move the triangles around, the side lengths don't change. Now, angles, we can do the same thing. So this angle here is 90 degrees. Well, the corresponding angle is this one here. This one is also 90 degrees. Then this one is 60 degrees, and its corresponding part is right here. So this is 60 degrees. And then this one is 30, and that's corresponding one is here. Then we can do it again. We have our 90 degree angle. Well, now that angle is up here. So this is my 90. Then I have my 60 degree angle, which is right here. Then my 30, which is now right here. So again, all the measures of the angles are the same as well. Now, understanding the markings. So we can use dashed lines and angle arcs to indicate the lengths and angles that are congruent. So for instance, we have this side here with a single dash. Well, we find its corresponding part, and we'd put a single dash there. That means that this side and this side are congruent. Then we could do this one here with the double dash, and we find its corresponding side, right, which is here, and we do a double dash there. That means that those two sides are congruent. Then we do triple dash and triple dash and show that those are congruent. And we can continue that on with this triangle as well. So we have single here, double here, and triple here. So that indicates that all the three dashes are all congruent, all the two dashes are congruent, and all the single dashes are congruent. Now, same thing with the angles now. Now, notice we have arcs here. If it's a 90 degree angle, then we put a box, but otherwise it would be an arc, and we could have a single, double, and we could have a triple arc as well to represent those angles. So we have our 90 degree angle here, which matches up with this one here. Then we have our single arc, which goes here, 
and our double arc, which goes here, that indicates that this one and this one are congruent. This angle and this angle are congruent, and this angle and this angle are congruent. And we can do it over here as well. Here's our 90. Our single arc would be here, and our double arc would be there. And again, the arcs match up the congruent angles. So we need to be able to discuss how to label each of these parts of the triangle. So the first way is the line segments are written by their two endpoints. For instance, this is AB. And then we'd have BC. So that goes from here to here. And then we have AC or CA. Either way works. And you could do it in any order. This could be BA or CB. It doesn't really matter. But we need to indicate it by the two endpoints. Now, angles are given by the two endpoints with the vertex in the middle. So, for instance, if I want this angle right here, that is ABC or CBA. Either way. But I have B in the middle. Then if I want to do the next one, I could have ACB. That represents this angle here. And then BAC represents this angle right here. So these are ways we can label the parts of a triangle. Now, understanding congruence. In order to show that two triangles are congruent, we must show that all the sides and all the angles are congruent. So first, we need to state the parts that are congruent. Well, we have AB here with a single dash, and we have DE here with a single dash, so those are congruent. Now, notice, I said AB is congruent to DE. I didn't say AB is congruent to ED because that is not a true statement. In order to make a true statement, I need to follow along with the corresponding parts. So I went from the end point with the double arc to the end point with the 90 degree angle. So I need to do the same thing here. End point with the double arc to the end point with the 90 degree angle. So it's AB is congruent to DE. Then we have BC here is congruent to EF. And AC is congruent to DF. So those show that all the parts are congruent. Then I have my angles. Angle ABC is congruent to angle DEF because they're both 90 degrees. They both have the box. Then I have angle ACB, so the single arc, is congruent to DFE, single arc as well. And then I'll do my double arc. So BAC is congruent to EDF, and those are congruent. So now we've shown that all the sides and all the angles are congruent, so therefore the triangles are congruent. So we can now say that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. Now, one of the properties of triangles says that the total amount of all the angles should end up being 180 degrees. So, for instance, we have a triangle here. This one's 90, 60, and 30. If we add all those together, we get 180 degrees. Now, the different types of triangles. So, the first kind is an equilateral triangle. An equilateral triangle has all three sides congruent. And all three angles are congruent. Isosceles triangles have two sides congruent and two angles that are opposite of those sides congruent. And then lastly, we have a scalene triangle where no sides are congruent and no angles are congruent. So what do these look like? Equilateral, remember, is all sides congruent, all angles congruent. So it looks like this. So all the sides are the same and all the angles are the same. Isosceles triangle has two sides, this side and this side the same, and the opposite angles the same. Scalene is just kind of random. All the sides, all the angles are different. Other types of triangles, we have right triangles, where one of the angles is a right angle or a 90-degree angle. Acute triangles have all angles smaller than 90 degrees. And an obtuse triangle has one of the angles bigger than 90. So what does this look like? Right triangle has a 90-degree angle right here. Acute triangle, all the angles are smaller than 90. So in this case, they're all 60, but they don't have to all be the same. They just need to all be smaller than 90. And then obtuse has this big angle here that's bigger than 90, right? Because if I were to draw a right angle, it would go up like this. And it's definitely bigger than that. So that's an obtuse triangle.
Let's take a look now at the parts of a triangle and congruence assignment. The assignment begins with the learning goals and success criteria. If we scroll down, there's a link here to take us to the Desmos activity. Go ahead and click on that link. And it should take you to a page that looks like this. We'll go ahead and click start the activity. The activity begins with the learning goals and success criteria. We'll go ahead and click next. So this one says, what is the proper way to label the angle on the left of the triangle? So this one here, so we could call that angle CAB or angle BAC, either one works. So we have angle CAB, angle BAC. Now it's not a triangle, so it can't be that one. And then angle ABC is not correct because B is not the center of it. We're not looking at angle B here. And we'll do that for each of these. So this one, we want the bottom angle. So this is this angle here. What's the proper way to label the triangle? Well, we can pick that out from here. Same thing here, which is the proper way to label the bottom side. So that is side AB, or it could be BA. So both of these work. Notice we do not use this symbol here, just these two here. Then we'll click Next. Find the sum of the angles. So what is the total number of the angles here? Well, we know that's always 180 degrees. We hit check it. It tells us that's correct. And we can do that for each of these as well. So we can hit try it. It says we got it, did a great job. If we do something incorrectly, it tells us to try again. Then for this one, what would be the unknown angle? You'd answer that, hit check it. Then here it says, what side is congruent to AB? So in this one, we can see that it's DE. So we go ahead and mark that as our answer. Hit check it. It tells us we got it right. If we did it incorrectly, it'll say, please try again. So you'll answer each of these questions about congruency. Then you'll answer each of these on the types of triangles. So what kind of triangle is shown here? This one has all sides different lengths. So this is a scalene triangle. We'll go ahead and hit check it. That's correct. This one here, we have a triangle here. We call that a right triangle because it's got a right angle. Check it. It's correct. If we get it wrong, it'll tell us to try it again. So you'll do that for each of these questions. And then when you're done with this activity, you'll go back to your Google form and click next. This will take you to your before you go. Go ahead and fill out your before you go and then submit your work on Google Classroom.